Hello, God bless you. Hope everyone is having a great day today. This is Brother David. Today we have the scripture from the book of Psalms, chapter 77, verse 12, which says, I will meditate also of thy work and talk of thy doings. If you look at this verse on Bible Hub and look at the chapter, the chapter is called In Distress I Sought the Lord. The psalm is about someone in great sorrow who, as we see in verses 7 through 9, feels forsaken by God, and is asking, has the Lord rejected me? Has his kindness, mercy, and love gone forever? He also asks the Lord if he will ever send help again. Then the psalmist answers his own question. When the psalmist remembers what the Lord has done for his people in the past, the psalmist remembers who God is and what God can do. The Lord's works, deeds are many, the psalmist desires not to forget any of them, but remember the multitude of the Lord's tender mercies, and not only remember them, but ponder upon them in his meditations, in order to gain some relief by them under his present circumstances. And talk of thy doings is not a conversation with others, it's a meditation. He designed to reflect on the doings of the Lord, and to talk of the Lord's doing will imprint them into the psalmist's own mind that they might not be forgotten by him. Because all the things that we find important, we talk about so that they will be remembered. The New Lemon Translation says this verse like this, They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. The Berean Standard Bible says, I will reflect on all you have done and ponder on your mighty deeds. The contemporary English version says, I will think about each one of your mighty deeds. Now instead of moaning about his problems, the psalmist will remember all the mercies of the Lord that the Lord has done for him in the past. He finds relief in contrasting the former deliverances that God has done, which is proof of the Lord's unmistakable mercy and unfailing love. The remembrance of the works of God will be a powerful remedy against distrust of his promise and goodness. For he is God and changes not. And if we have thoughts of doubt, we should without delay turn our minds to meditate on the Lord, who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, that with him you freely give us all things. So if you're going through something right now, you know, we, we all go through spiritual warfare. We all go through the ups and downs and laughs, the unexpected turns in the road. That's for Christians or non-Christians. Everyone goes through good times and bad in this world. But when we're going through a bad time, we don't need to sulk in our troubles, have a pity party. You know, this verse is saying right here, he's going through some trouble, and he wonders if the Lord has left him. And then he remembers what the Lord has done in the past, and he wonders... Can the Lord do that for me right now? So you may be going through something right now, and you may feel like there's no way out. Lord, know that the Lord is right there, right beside you. And he's done it for you in the past. He will do it for you again. All you got to do is put your faith and trust in him. Know that he's got you. He's right there, right beside you. He'll find a way where there seemed to be no way. He's done it for us in the past, and he will do it again. All we got to do is put our faith and trust in him. And if you don't know Jesus today, you have ups and downs in life. Unexpected turns the road just like everybody else. In fact, you are still here right now because the Lord has been in circumstances that you don't understand, that you don't acknowledge. And the Lord has kept his hand on you to bring you to this day. And I believe that if you're listening to this video right now, and you've gotten to this point, and you don't know Jesus, then the Lord has given you one more opportunity to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus, to understand that these circumstances that when you really take the time to reflect, there's certain periods of your life where you realize something unexplainable happened to keep you from some certain situation. And that was the Lord. But you see, you don't know Jesus. You don't take the time to talk to him, to pray, to read the Bible. You don't want to get to know him. You may be playing games with him right now. And with all the craziness of the world, playtime is over. You may intellectually know who Jesus is. You may do it on the day on the cross. But you don't know him personally. So you don't understand. You don't see 
these certain events in your life, God had his hand on you. But I want to introduce you to Jesus right now. I want to show you exactly who Jesus is and what he did for you on the cross. And I just challenge you to just think back at certain times in your life. Maybe something that we're a feeling that don't go to this certain place or something. There's some point in time in your life where there's some unexplained thing happened. And that was the Lord keeping his hand on you, keeping you safe, getting you to this moment in time. Some choice you made. We all have choices in every single situation of life. Do I go somewhere today or do I stay home? Do I say this to somebody or do I hold my peace? You know, whatever it may be. The Lord has kept his hand on you, bringing you to this day. And if you reflect on that, on these certain times in your life, just know that that was the Lord keeping his hand on you to preserve you to this day. And I want to introduce you to the person who kept his hand on you. I want to introduce you to let you know exactly who he is and what he did for you all. On that cross. The gospel in a nutshell is that because of the fall from Genesis chapter 3, sin entered the world. And sin creates a wall that separates all of us from God. Because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages, the punishment for sin, is death. Meaning because we sin, not one of us is worthy of going to heaven. There's a punishment for sin. Because we sin, we all deserve punishment. We are all destined to destruction. And we all deserve eternal separation from God, which means a life in hell. Because we serve a perfect Holy God, and His standard perfection, we can never meet. But here's the mercy of God, that God loves you so much that God sent His Son, Jesus, who left heaven, became a flesh and blood human, 100%, fully God, fully man. Jesus lived a perfect, sinless life. Jesus was the only one who could meet that standard of perfection. And on the cross, Jesus became sin for us to pay for our sins. Meaning when Jesus was on the cross, Jesus put our sins on Himself like a garment. Jesus took the punishment for our sins, because as I've said, there's a punishment for sin. But we're the ones who fall short. We're the ones who sin. We deserve this punishment. We deserve to be on that cross. Jesus was sinless, innocent of death. But instead of us being punished for our sins, Jesus took that punishment that we deserve in our place, so that when we believe the gospel message and are saved, then we put on his righteousness. We are all like a garment that is stained with sin. But when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, it's like we're put in a washing machine. We are washed clean with the precious blood of Jesus. We are washed white as snow. And now because we put on Jesus' righteousness like a garment, now when God sees us, he doesn't see our sin. Now God sees Jesus. The gospel message is that Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day. And if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you'll be saved. Whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life, and this is a continual belief every day. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved, and saved from what? Saved from an eternity in hell. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. Jesus is the door. There are not multiple ways to get to heaven. No one else can save you. A preacher cannot deem you worthy. Your mom or dad cannot confess that you're a good person. Your works, your deeds can't earn salvation. Salvation cannot be found in anyone else or anywhere else. Salvation can only be obtained by faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus' blood is a ticket. On the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins, took our punishment. Jesus' blood is what bought our ticket into heaven. Jesus' blood is what covered our sin debt, past, present, and future. Jesus' blood is what broke down the wall that separates us from God. Jesus' blood is what redeemed us, bought us back, paid the ransom to free us from the power of sin, to free us from an eternity in hell. So if you sincerely believe and surrender your life to Jesus, which means you're not just saying words, not trying to please someone, not looking for a get out of hell free card, but you really do believe in who Jesus is and what Jesus did for the cross, and you truly want to live from now, then you will be saved. So accept Jesus' free gift of salvation, that free ticket into heaven. This is Jesus' free gift of grace extended to you. All you have to do is accept it because we cannot earn our way to heaven. We cannot be a good enough person. We can't do enough good deeds. And when you stand before God, it won't matter how much you've given to charity, or you think, I've been a good enough person. I never robbed or killed anybody. Our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. It is by grace that we are saved through faith. It is not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace means an unearned gift. We cannot earn it. We do not deserve it. We can't earn heaven. We don't deserve to go to heaven. We can't meet those standards. We don't deserve salvation. We don't even deserve Jesus. But God loves us so much. And by his grace, he made a way for us to be saved. He made a way for us to 
have fellowship with him. And we always follow the gospel with the warning of Jesus' intimate return. Because right now you can personally know who Jesus is. But one thing is for sure, the Bible is clear. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. You need to turn to Jesus today. You do not have time to keep putting Jesus off. So if you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him today while you still have the time. Tomorrow might be too late. So whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now, maybe you don't think you're good enough. As I said, none of us meet that standard of perfection. None of us are good enough. We all need a Savior. Maybe you're waiting for your children to move out. Maybe you're waiting through your financial secure. Whatever excuse it may be, do not put Jesus off any longer. There is no guarantee you'll live to see tomorrow. And if you die before coming to Jesus, then when you stand before God, it will be too late to make excuses. So turn to Jesus today. Today is the day of salvation. So if you'd like to be saved, we have in the description box a link to the ABCs of Salvation and a sample prayer. Where these are just templates. An outline of what you can say to be saved. It is not a repeat after me. There are no magic words to be saved. In fact, these words are not even important. But if you want to be saved, it just needs to be a sincere prayer from your heart that you cannot do this on your own, that you need a Savior. And what you're doing is you're admitting you're a sinner in need of a Savior in need of Jesus. And you believe in who Jesus is and what Jesus did for you on the cross. And you confess and repent of your sins, which means you're turning away from them. You're having a change of heart, a change of mind. And whatever you may be battling right now, if you trust in the Lord and let him, then the Holy Spirit, who now indwells in you, will lead you, guide you, and change you if you let him. He can take away whatever you may be battling if you let him. Well, I pray you guys to know this video, but never take my word for it. No one on this earth has the answers. The smartest person in the world doesn't have the answers. The most famous preacher doesn't have the answers. Only God does, and you will only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. And it is so very important to read the Bible for yourself. Just picking random verses or listening to someone read or preach for a few minutes. You will not get the full picture. They won't even scratch the surface of what is in the Bible. So read and discover the stories for yourself. And the Bible will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, or struggle that you may be going through right now. In the description box, we have several links to read the Bible. The Bible is our roadmap, our GPS, our lantern, our flashlight to navigate through this ever-darkening world. So read the Bible for yourself. And if you need prayer, please reach out to us. We want to stand in agreement with you and pray for your needs. Or if you have a praise report, please share it with us. We'd love to praise Jesus right along with you for what the Lord is doing in your life. Well, I pray you got something out of this video today. If you did, give God glory. I cannot wait to see the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow the Lord tarries. Or we'll see in the clouds. Look up. Our redemption draweth nigh. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus.